Okay, so the break-in process. What do you want to do? Uh, we're going to start with if you're the one assembling this engine. So you've got your parts back, you've got your block back, everything machined from uh, the machine shop, the engine builder, but you're assembling it yourself. Uh, the first thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure that you clean the parts thoroughly. You don't want to introduce any dirt into the system, into the oiling system, into the engine. Um, so you want to make sure you clean everything properly. Make sure that you check uh, with your parts manufacturer on the proper cleaning process. Uh, most parts are, are shipped with a, uh, a protective film, if you will, and you need to clean that, that off. But there are some parts like roller lifters. There's some roller lifter manufacturers that actually pack the bearings with a particular grease that, that's able to mix in with the oil. It's a small amount, it's not gonna hurt anything, but that's there to uh, uh, provide some lubrication at that initial dry startup. And so you don't wanna clean that out. Um, uh, just check with your manufacturer, make sure you're following their guidelines as well. Um, you know, with the lifter scenario, you don't wanna go and take brake clean or, or soak them in solvent and, and clean all that, that packed grease out of there that they intend for you to use for startup. Uh, so check, check those things, make sure everything's done properly for the assembly. Um, the, the next thing is you want to use a proper assembly lube or assembly grease. Uh, we've got a couple different op options. In, in the past, um, now I'm talking about for the entire engine, um, so we're going to start with the main and rod bearings. A lot of engine builders like a lubricant, a thicker lubricant like the HVL here. Uh, the HVL is nice because engine builders like to have the feel by hand as they turn that crankshaft over as they assemble uh, the rod assemblies to that crankshaft. Make sure nothing's, uh, nothing's binding up, um, they're not feeling anything snag, and so this will produce a nice smooth feel as it's turned over by hand. Um, some, people, uh, some builders prefer this over the assembly grease because the assembly grease is going to have a little bit of a drag because it is a grease. The nice thing about the grease though is the grease is going to stay put. It's not going to drip off. It's going to stay where you apply it. And so some engine builders do opt to use this on the bearings, but most, most builders, uh, most people use this on the valve train. So cam, lifters, um, I wouldn't use it on the lifter to lifter bore. I would use it on the tappet of the lifter, whether that's a roller or a flat tappet. Uh, that's where I'd use it. And then on the cam lobes, on the, uh, the cam journals, for the cam journals, I would use the HVL. Um, again, you can use this uh, push rod tips, rocker arm tips, uh, anywhere where there's boundary lubrication, that's where you would want that because it's not gonna drip off. But I wanna talk about something new. Uh, this is our new GP1 assembly gel, and this is really interesting. Um, this is a no-drip special formulation. It's, it's kind of in between, so I kind of set it up in between so you have kind of a visual here. Uh, it's, it's in between a, a lubricant and a grease. It's actually a gel compound. And so it does the same thing as the grease. It, does, it stays put, it, it stays where you apply it. It's not gonna drip off. Um, and, and actually when we tested this, we used uh, CompCam Spintron to test this a few years back when we were, when we were coming out with this. And uh, it made a difference if we let the engine sit overnight with some other competitive assembly lubes out there. So uh, very important that it doesn't drip. The other nice thing about it is because it's a gel compound, it doesn't have any thickeners like a grease does. So the, you have better additive response with the additive package that's mixed in here. Um, so those are some things there. Another thing here with our grease I wanna cover is this is a calcium sulfonate grease. And that's important for the initial startup. A lot of, we get a lot of phone calls that ask, they say, is this a molly grease? Do you have a molly grease? Uh, it seems to be a popular question out there. You actually, you, you don't, again, you don't want molly. You don't want molly for the initial break-in period because that's gonna hinder the piston to cylinder wall, uh, or sorry, the ring to cylinder wall sealing. Um, this is a calcium sulfonate. And what that's gonna do is it's going to, it's an EP additive and it's gonna have, uh, provide protection right away initially 
uh, before you need to get up to temperature because zinc requires heat and load to activate, but calcium sulfonate is, is there already uh, as an EP, an extreme pressure additive for the initial protection before the oil can get there. Um, the next thing is you want to you you want to be careful on what filter you select. I got a couple of filters off here to the side. This is a Wix XP and this is a Wix Racing filter. Um, you want to use a smaller micron filter for your break-in period because you want to catch and trap those particles. You're, all, you're, you're always going to have the most wear at the initial run-in time and you need to have a fi finer micron filter to catch those particles, to catch those the, the, the higher level of particles. You don't want to use a racing filter like this Wix racing filter that is 61 microns compared to I believe 32 microns on the, the XP. The XP is kind of they're, they're middle of the road, high flow, but smaller micron uh, filtration. And, and this would be something I'd recommend or the standard Wix, which is a little bit finer. There are some debates out there on uh, using too fine uh, of a micron filter, because again, like we talked about in the other vid video, um, or maybe I didn't cover it yet, is with break-in, you wanna make sure you have good oil flow. And, and while we're on this topic, I wanna to talk about that. If you're undecided on what viscosity oil you should be running um, for break-in, I, I would almost always opt towards the thinner oil because it's gonna to get to the parts faster. You're gonna have better initial flow at room temperature, cold temperature. So again, if your bearing clearance is set up in a, in a range where you're kinda of in between viscosity, say a 1040 and a 530, I would probably go with the 530. Now there are some exceptions to that. So if, you, if, if you're not sure, I'd always recommend that you give us a call on our tech line. Uh, the next thing, so you've got the filter on, you've filled the crankcase, you wanna prime the oil system. You wanna get everything lubricated and you wanna prime the oil system. Um, that's important as well. Uh, flat tap it can break in, uh, 20 to 30 minutes around 2,500 RPM, uh, varying the RPM. I wouldn't just sit it there at one place. Um, and then after that, I would recommend draining the break-in oil, changing the filter, and putting fresh break-in oil back in a, in a new filter. Um, oil's cheap. The engine's not, the parts are not. So I would, I would drain the oil. You wanna get all the initial wear metals. There's always a higher uh, particulate higher particle, higher wear metal count in the in the oil during the initial break-in. So it's important to get that out of there. And the only way to do that is to actually drain the oiling system and then put fresh break-in oil in it. Uh, for a street car, maybe you don't have a flat tap at cam um, and it's, it's a roller, hydraulic roller setup, or maybe it's a solid roller. And, and so you don't have to do a cam break-in. I would run it for the first 50, 75 miles and then I would, I would drain it. If it's a circle track or something like that, maybe one, one racing night on it and then drain it. Um, again, you're just trying to get all those particles out of the system. I'd put fresh break-in oil back in it because the rings aren't sealed up yet. Back to ring seal. There's specific chemistry here to promote and help with positive ring seal. And you're trying to help create that surface area and have that friction, that friction's needed to create that surface area and for those rings to lap in with the cylinder wall. So the rings aren't sealed up yet. If you've done a cam break in, they're not sealed up yet. So you wanna put break-in oil back in there to help assist with the, the, the ring sealing. Um, and then you know, run that break-in oil for, for the first 400 to 500 miles. After the break-in oil, um, I would recommend giving us a call, shoot us an email on our tech email, uh, tech at drivenracingoil.com or give us a call at 866-611-1820 and somebody would be glad to recommend the proper oil for your regular oil change. That may be one of the GP1 products, that may be one of the, the HR products, our hot rod oils, or maybe one of our street performance oils. So those are just a couple of things, some things to be thinking about and, and what to follow during the break-in process. Again, if you have any questions, give us a call. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.